Well, what we have here is something of an epic failure in uh, masonry, and we're going to try to turn it into some sort of an epic repair. Uh, there was a full concrete, beautiful arched bluestone staircase coming off of here, and a bluestone patio set in a mortar in a bed of sand. Over time, the sand bed kind of pitched back. The water off the roof was going in, causing problems with the house, and when it dropped down behind that uh, fixed uh, stair tread, the water was then channeled right underneath the stair tread, between the stair tread and the concrete. It worked its way through. As soon as water penetrates like that, it's not coming out and it's gonna cause damage wherever it is. Uh, around here we have freeze thaw that once it goes in, it freezes and it, and it just breaks things free. Once it gets bigger then, more water can get in, it gets bigger. But even off season or even in a place where you don't have freezing, if it's saturated like that and water has a chance to work its way through, it slowly breaks down the minerals and the compounds that make the mortar. Uh, so this one, it was pretty much a complete loss and we're now, uh, I promised the customer that we would fix this in a way that it wouldn't do that again. And that's kind of a scary promise because there's quite a few factors running against us. What we decided to do is we peeled off all the blue stones, which they didn't put up much of a fight. They weren't, the, most of the bond was broken. We scored up the bottom. Uh, we put a drip edge, see that little groove right there? So that when water runs off this top, I think I can show it to you on the end here. When water runs off this top, it doesn't get the capillary back and get in behind the next layer. It drops free. So any drop of water, if you look at old buildings, old European buildings, look at the brickwork and the masonry work, water was always in consideration. It looked just like art with all the ins and outs that they were building. And it wasn't art, but it was also a science. They were constantly trying to create ways to get water to drip free, free, instead of sticking to it and causing damage. So we're not quite that fancy and artistic here, but we made this drip edge here so that the water is going to drip away. Then we put a keyway in the top of this uh, concrete wall so that our new mortar gets bitten into that lower keyway. And we put a corresponding keyway into the top of this. Now, even if there was a beginning of a few molecules of water going in, they should run into that and there be no more continuation across. We're going to try to make the best bond possible. You would think that bonding stone to mortar to mortar to concrete is a simple thing because that's kind of what masonry is, but those things don't really like each other and it doesn't take much to get them to break free. So we've made this as clean as possible. We've scarred it, we've uh, cut it, then we've taken the power washer and blasted it. We've done the same to the back of this. Now we're going to work uh, spec mix, which is a kind of a hybrid between mortar and thin set. It's a veneer stone mortar, spec mix veneer stone mortar, and we're going to use that here, working it in very carefully, mixing it according to the instructions so that all the polymers are broken and activated. We're going to use some adhesion enhancer on both sides, and we're going to set it once and make sure we have no air pockets. Air pockets could eventually become water pockets. It's going to be a process, but we're going to try to put it all together once this thing is on, we also cut the back edge of this concrete wall so that we are perfectly flush. And once this piece is on, I'm going to take uh, Maypie makes it and a few other a cistern paint, Ames makes it, uh, a rubberized coating after everything is cured. And I'm going to put a rubberized coating band-aid right over that weak point. Also, we have uh, pea gravel here run down to a sock drain. So the moisture, the water, if it builds up, can't build hydrostatic pressure, meaning it can't get to a position where it has to go somewhere and it's forced. That socked drain, that's a, a pipe with a, a mesh over it so it doesn't get filled with mud, that socked drain will take that pressure away. If water builds up, it's dropping in that drain and going out to a downhill daylight uh, exit. So there shouldn't be a water buildup and there shouldn't be any reason the water would be welcome to here. And the surface water, we're actually setting this about a half inch lower 
So the surface water between A and B are going to be pitched a little bit more, running off, hitting those drip edge, and running free. That's the plan. We'll see how it all turns out. What we're doing here is working this spec mix mortar into all the nooks and crannies. I put those nooks and crannies there for the grinder and I want to get full credit for them. This is how you do any good uh, adhesion between two items is you confirm on both sides, not just put glue on one side and, then the, and nothing on the other. You confirm both sides so it's a glue to glue faces that are getting adhered together. So that's what we're doing here. We've done the same thing. We've confirmed that we've got good coverage in that keyway there. And we've packed this keyway full. And then we're going to do a build up in between. These are little screed boards. And we're going to pull the level across that to get our even perfect mud bed to set this guy on. Okay, we have uh, bedded up mortar and set these top blue stones. The problem was water had gotten in behind here and wreaked havoc forward. So we're trying to eliminate any chance of that happening. We put the keyways in, we set it in good quality spec mix mortar, uh, but still I want to show you what we're up to here. We're putting this, uh, this is a tile product for showers and stuff. It's a Maypie or also Ames uh, makes a similar product. Uh, it has some stretchability and, and a waterproofing, almost like a cistern paint that you would uh, keep your fish in a big cement pond in. So we're applying that to the back here because we know that as best as we can do, there still could be a separation. Right here, there was a little sag separation already. If that opening begins right now, water starts penetrating in there and we're back to where we started. So I have uh, ground this as flat as I possibly could. I've cleaned it off, uh, get the dust off of it, and I'm applying this with this fancy paintbrush. It says this is an industrial grade paintbrush. I don't know what industry that would be. Uh, but we're getting over any of those joints. So we're back down onto the uh, solid concrete down below and as close to the top as possible. And then we're going to take that black uh, 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 water tape over top of that as another membrane behind this back because if this fails everything's going to fail uh, in front of it. That's our process.